Aigle is unique. Three railways in the station forecourt, but only the CFF inside. Strangely, the through ride on each metre gauge line includes a reversal of direction. Oldest, shortest and steepest of the three lines, the Aigle Les Ains opened in 1900. Railcard 203 dates from 1946. At filming in 1962, none of the original power was still running. The first 1,000 yards had a tram ride through this country town, six miles above the top end of Lake Geneva. But the line's character changes completely after we reverse in the depot yard. A four-wheel coach is added between the power car and the wagon. We'll ride in it. So the driver's now behind our four-wheel coach and the little wagon. The AL depot, the ASD's depot, is over there. The gradient's about one in four and a half. Fontanet passing siding. Not enough space for a loop. It's 1300 DC on the climb, but only 600 volts in the streets. We meet number 12 of 1915 in a Renard loop. In bad weather they cover the parcels. I hope. Les Ains has many large buildings with a melancholy past. Sanatoria from the days before drugs were able to cure tuberculosis. Fresh air and sunshine were all they could offer the patients. That station was Les Ains Village. This flight of steps is Vermont, a stop on request. The train terminates at Les Infedes, unless someone wants Grand Hotel 400 yards beyond. In just under four miles, we've climbed 3,260 feet. This line opened in 1913. The original stock by Schlieren was to be all they had until 1987. Just collecting two wagons of ballast. This intersection is with the AOMC. The amazing thing about the ASD is its survival. Serving a mainly sparsely populated valley, its closure has often been threatened. Above Chateau d'Aigle, the line snakes about among the vineyards, gazing height at a steady 1 in 17 before turning into the shadowy south side of the valley of the Grand O. This rocky cleft would have been formed by water action as a former lake higher up drained into the Rhone Valley. The Vanne Bridge crosses a tributary stream, unseen far below. The main span is over 200 feet long. Plombouy Loop, protection for the road along the sunnier north side of the gorge. That shelter forms a landmark we shall see again in a later item. At Les Planches, we cross another notable bridge over the Grand Eau's ravine to Le Sepe, largest village in the valley, a reinforced concrete span of over 200 feet. Le Sepe lies near the start of the road over the 4,700 foot Col de Moss to Chateau de on the MOB. In recent years, many ASD trains have connected into a minibus at Les Planches, shortening the through journey. Up to Le Sepi is only 1,100 yards, but one climbs 115 feet. To improve business prospects, extending the line beyond Les Diablerets has been proposed a few times, but just two and a half miles on, and 1,300 feet higher, the Col de Pion bars the way to Gesteig and Gestad. The cost of a major tunnel could never be justified, especially as the resulting route would largely duplicate the MOB. Here's the track work. We stop to uncouple one of the ballast wagons. It will be emptied 
and run by gravity down to a siding before the next train. Hope the handbrake works okay. The other ballast wagon has been left in the next loop, no doubt to be run down to site later. It's been 1350 volts DC since the start, back in 1913. Here's the terminus. In 18 miles we've climbed nearly 2,500 feet. The two metre gauge lines serving Monte merged in 1946 to form the AOMC. Rack-equipped car 12 will take us all the way through to Champéry. The right angle crossing with the ASD. And here's the third depot in Aigle. This first part of the AOMC starts with an almost level run, south along the Rhone Valley to Hollande, where the village postman waits for the mail. After Hollande, the line turns towards the west side of the valley. First, we cross the main road towards the Saint-Plan and St. Bernard passes, then over the international main line, beside saint trifon station, since closed. Today you would cross the motorway about here. Now over the Rhone, to follow the main road through Colombe. The Aigle Hollande Monte opened in 1907. The locals don't seem to regard this as a railway. Well away from the CFF station, Monte's meter gauge station has since been rebuilt and includes a terminal for AOMC buses. This would have been the depot for the originally separate Monte Chambéry Morgin company, onto whose line we've now diverged. Morgin is a village in a side of valley of the same name. It never did get a railway. Climbing on the first rack section, at 1 in 7.4, we look back across Monte and this part of the Rhone Valley. Aigle and its other two lines are in Canton Vaud, but when we crossed the Rhone, we entered Canton Valles. All three Aigle lines have since become managed by the Transport Public du Chablais. A proportion of AOMC's rail cars are not rack equipped, so they cannot be used above Monte. Hence, it can often be necessary on a through journey to change vehicles at Monteville. We're now entering the Val d'Illier. The village behind us is Trois Torrents. See for Cremaillère, that's French for rack. The next village has the same name as the valley, Val d'Illier. This is Val d'Illier station. The opposite side of this valley rises to the well-known peaks of Les Dents du Midi, which often dominate southern views from the Vevey Montreux coast. This third rack section, almost to Champéry, completes our climb of 2,100 feet in the eight miles from Monteville. The line has since been extended through the village to end beside a skier's cable car.